Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm happy to res for the opportunity to respond for my second speech from the throne. I would li just like to thank the Honourable Lois Mitchell for her hard work since becoming Lieutenant Governor. She happens to be the first Lieutenant Governor that my grandma and grandpa had the opportunity to meet uh, when she was presiding over the Seniors Olympics in their apartment complex. Um, kind of to refer to a reflection that was made by some comments from the member of Edmonton McClung last week who spoke about a great progressive conservative Prime Minister John Diefenbaker who was an inspiration to him. I want to open up about another great progressive conservative Prime Minister that I was very fond of, Joe Clark. A young politician with a drive for positive social change, much like many of the members of this House. I first saw Joe Clark when I was in junior high in the early 2000s, sorry to date myself. And despite the challenges that the LGBTQ community in Calgary had faced, and the fact that this very legislature threatened to use the notwithstanding clause to prevent same-sex marriage, I saw him become the first Prime Minister in Canada to march in a gay pride parade. I think him taking a stand on social change was what inspired me to follow politics in Alberta more closely. I was also found the uh, speech from the throne quite fitting that it was on International Women's Day. As many of my colleagues have noted in their speeches, I am proud of the work our government and our ministry for the status of women is doing. Alberta still has a long way to go when it comes to gender equality, but I am confident that our government will continue to make significant strides. It is amazing to see how far we have come with women's issues. Back in the 70s, my mother chose not to change her last name when she got married. She dealt with countless amounts of discrimination from government departments to people who challenged the strength of her marriage. Now, 40 years later, she is still in a strong, happy marriage. I am fortunate to have a mother so strong who spoke up against the public service cuts to pension to a committee that I am now honoured to chair myself. Calgary Shaw is home to another. Uh, it is home to a great number of fantastic schools, businesses, and organizations. One institution I feel most lucky to have is St. Mary's University. As the members here are probably getting sick of me talking about the great things that St. Mary's University does, St. Mary's University's basketball team just la left for nationals this week after a victory over the undefeated Lakeland College. Now, I feel it unfortunate that the member of Vermilion Lloyd Minster is not here, as I would take a jab at his uh, college losing, but, but <laughs> for another day. Um, I have enjoyed watching their games all season. They are only three years old right now, so it's quite an accomplishment to go this far, and I wish them all the best in the finals. These women have a lot of heart and passion. I like to recognize their star player, Montana Roman Lille. This season broke the ACAC record for the most three-point shots scored, and that happened during mid-season. I am also inspired by Cassandra Harkima, who joined the team after being out for nearly 10 years after facing an injury from a car accident while she still played for State. Not only have I enjoyed watching them play, but their professionalism and work ethic is something that I am proud to be able to share with my son, who enjoys coming to games with me. This is one of the many reasons I am proud of St. Mary's University and my constituency of Calgary Shaw. Another inspiring woman I've had the honour of hosting last week at the uh, speech from the throne was uh, Catholic trustee Mary Martin. I must say that Mary is by far one of the most inspirational politicians I've had the opportunity to work with. Mary sits on the Calgary Catholic Board and is also vice chair of ASBA. She is one of the most sincere people who I've had the pleasure to know and it's a joy working with her in my constituency. Her passion for caring for others is seen by the fact that she is still a practicing nurse. Mr. Speaker, family is very important to me. As I know, as I know it is for all my constituents. The other day I had a tear in my eye when I saw the member for Calgary Varsity in the chamber with her son. I think it sets a great opportunity for young people to get into politics. There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing harder than from going to be a father on parental leave to one who has to commute to Edmonton every week. The second week I came to Edmonton, my wife texted me, informing me that my son cried himself to sleep because of the abs my absence. 
It is heartbreaking, but I know the work we are doing in this house is not only making the lives of our constituents better, but is making a significant impact to the lives of all people in Alberta. Leaving my family is the hardest part of this job, and I am happy that both sides of this house have committed to working towards making this legislature more family friendly. Being a stay-at-home father who t was taking care of an eight-month-year-old daughter on election day, I can say that a standalone status of women ministry will not only just bring equality to women, but even open up doors for men too. A huge fear I faced as a father going on parental leave was what impact it would have on my career. And the stigma hitting stay-at-home fathers still exists. I have seen it firsthand from my brother-in-law, Olaf Bacher, who has stayed at home to support my sister's career. I have been inspired by my sister Melanie, who is the first Sucha in the family to receive a master's degree. She was given a wealth of knowledge and has given me a wealth of knowledge about the oil sector and the challenges that it faces. Many of my constituents rely on oil and gas for their livelihoods, and they can be confident that our government is doing everything it can to put Albertans back to work and promote economic growth and diversification. As the throne speech also outlined, Canada's energy industry must have safe, efficient pipeline access to Tidewater so that energy production can command the highest possible value on the world market. As I see it, we have two choices. We can pound our face or pound our chest or work collaboratively to get pipelines to Tidewater. As we have learned from what has happened over the last 15 years, what we were doing did not get the job done. Canada's inability over the past few years to pursue strategic energy policies supported by Canadians has made it impossible so far for our country to diversify our markets. It is time to change our strategy and our climate change leadership plan is just the start and that's not coming from me, that's coming from industry leaders. As a resident of, on Treaty 7 land, I want to thank the Calgary Métis Family Services, which has its office in my constituency, who's helped educate me on the many challenges that off-the-reserve Aboriginal people face. I think it is important that we move forward with meaningful dialogue with all Aboriginal people, and that is why I'm happy we are moving forward with the repeal of Bill 22. Before taking office, I used to lose sleep over the world we were going to leave our children due to the implications we are seeing due to climate change. I am happy we are working with industry leaders to find solutions that will allow us to invest here in Alberta while supporting those who are low income and small businesses during the transition. I am happy to say that Alberta is now doing its part in conjunction with industry leaders to help provide a more appealing product to market. As we move forward with our climate change strategy, it is important that we balance our economy with our social responsibilities. This will be a great way for us to diversify our economy and create jobs. As much as we spoke highly of how we paid off our debt, it came at a cost. At the time, the previous government took tackets of measure, massive slash and burns, and many Albertans lost jobs. I am proud that our government, instead of instead committed to not only maintaining our frontline services and staff, but strengthening our health care and education system. We don't need to put our short-term bottom line over the interests of long-term recovery. Because of these slash and bird tactics, we have seen huge infrastructure deficits. Now with a lot of people out of work and delays in projects and deferred maintenance, I am pleased that our government has committed to invest $34 billion in infrastructure. This investment will not only help put Albertans back to work, but it will help us build desperately needed infrastructure projects our province desperately needs. Investments like these are seen in my home constituency with Fish Creek Park. This was not natural parkland space. It was a, naturally a farmland. But in the 70s, Peter Lahey had a vision to reclaim that land. And now it is something that I enjoyed as a child and I have to get to share with my children too. Growing up in Marlborough Park, I have seen the struggles that working families face day in and day out. The current system in place with payday loan companies in Alberta only fans the fires of poverty. We need a system in place that does not hurt those who are most vulnerable. And I, both my constituents and I, look forward to introduce the introduction of the Act to End Predatory Lending in Alberta. 
One thing I heard on the doorsteps that was a challenge that small businesses face is access to capital. This in some cases leads to investment being made to large players that are from out of province. By promoting access to capital, we allow our small businesses to continue being the grassroots jobs creators they are today here in Alberta. Our government invested $1.5 billion for ATB to invest in small businesses. is something that will help our small business owners in my constituency immediately. Mr. Speaker, I'm honoured. I think Her Honour put it best in her speech last week. Alberta, Albertans are community-minded, caring neighbor, and neighbourly. Ours is a society of friends. In tough times, we always pull together. We have each other's backs. We support each other in these times, and instead of making bad situations worse. And as I move forward, as being a business leader, someone who had an opportunity to run a business during, and as we move forward through these hard economic times, I want to recognize a very key person who really helped build me in the foresight that I see as uh, MLA who's been here for 10 months, and that is my old general manager, Aaron Haynes, while I was a manager at Milestones. He put a lot of faith and trust in me. He challenged me and pushed me to my brink, taught me how to work hard, and also challenged me to make sure that we made our business the most profitable possible. And as we move forward during these hard times, I will always reflect on the knowledge that he taught me during these uh, times as well. In closing, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank all members of this House for their hard work they have put in day in and day out for Alberta. I have enjoyed getting to know you all, and I look forward to getting to know you all even better. Thank you very much.